Well, hey everybody, welcome back. It is a Thursday afternoon, just getting off work. We are gonna go do some combining. Um, Kurt is uh, just finishing up his oats. He's got a little bit left, but he, he had a doctor's appointment uh, this afternoon. So he and his wife uh, have uh, gone to do that. And uh, we are going to run the combine and the grain card and the uh, grain truck on this fine Thursday afternoon, early evening. Don't have to go too far to get to the field from the co-op. We're actually just gonna go right over here and swing it in right here. And here we are. So you can see there's the old Kenworth. And there's a grain cart. And over somewhere on the other side of the field, we are going to find the combine. So glad you guys are back. Uh, hit that little red tractor button if you haven't subscribed yet. Let's go do some combining. So, while we're driving over here to find the combine, let me uh, let me take this opportunity to give you guys an update on the uh, on the Fiat. So, the Fiat, which I think I'm going to affectionately refer to as the Italian gelding, it's making progress. Um, so, if you'll remember, I found out from uh, from Steve that it actually ended up shutting down on a low oil pressure light and a buzzer. Didn't actually confirm, know for sure, that it did spin a, spin a crank bearing. So we, um, we've kind of gone through the paces and we have discovered that um, it does in fact uh, have a low pressure, uh, low oil pressure light and buzzer going off uh, when you crank it. We have not started it yet. We actually, um, what we did is we uh, we disassembled the uh, the filter housing. And what we found when we disassembled the filter housing, so the the filter screws, the oil filter screws, engine oil filter, uh, sorry, the engine oil filter screws right into the block. And what we found whenever we uh, took the oil filter off and we um, we started disassembling the uh, the filter uh, housing and the bypass and all that is that there was a lot of crud in this uh, in the mechanism like in the bypass valve and then the, the check valves and, and all that stuff that's in there we found some what looked like quart gasket and just a bunch of general just nasty gnarly looking cruddy stuff so that's where we're at. We worked on it a little bit last night, haven't put anything back together yet, um, but that's we're, we're hoping that once all the stuff's cleaned out and everything is um, put back together, we're hoping that will solve the problem, but don't know for sure yet. All right, so we're gonna hop in here. Um, we brought the grain cart down here and parked it on the side of the field so that when we come back to this end we'll be able to uh we'll be able to unload there's nobody here to drive the green cart at the same time so what we'll do is when we get back to this end of the field and we're halfway uh we're somewhat full we'll just have to swing over there and uh and unload and when the green cart gets full we'll have to take it over to the truck and uh, unload it come back etc so this is going to be kind of a one-man show but that's all right I don't mind being a one-man show. Now, this thing, Kurt and his wife left actually not too long ago, so this thing is not, uh, it's still somewhat up to operating temp, so we shouldn't have to wait very long here before we can get this thing uh, started again. All right, had a little technical difficulty there, had to sort out. But I think now we are ready to go. So, got 
got my auto steer engaged. And let's give this a shot. I'm not 100% sure if this is the line that uh, that Kurt was running as far as the GPS goes, but I believe it was. The, uh, the oats this year, the oats and the wheat for the most part, are really pretty outstanding as far as yield goes. We had ideal growing conditions uh, right up until the last, I'd say, couple of weeks and it's really kind of started to turn off dry um, at this point and um, if we don't get some rain here pretty shortly the uh, the soybeans have been planted and the corn that has been planted um, especially as you get kind of up out of the uh, of the river bottom here they're they're really going to start to suffer so i think there's some rain in the forecast for this weekend and into the uh, first of next week uh, so I, I definitely hope that we get some of that rain because otherwise the uh, the soybean and the corn are really gonna feel it dad is actually um, haven't said much about the Krieger place lately but he is actually over there uh, this afternoon fishing up with the uh, finishing up with the tractor and the uh, sickle mower. He has mowed the, uh, the pasture on that place and he is going to, uh, I think he's going to do the rake-in and the baling as well. He knew that I was going to kind of be hooked up helping out, uh, helping out with Kurt's stuff here and um, I think he just kind of wanted to do it anyways. You know, he, he owns the tractor and he just lets me use it uh, to do the baling and, and that sort of stuff, but I own I own the mower and the um, and the rake and both of the balers. So I think he just wanted to kind of have some time on the tractor, and he wanted to um, to do his own his own hay baling. I think so. Well, I'm over here helping Kurt, and uh, you know while I've been at work at the co-op and all, uh, he's been doing that to try to get that done before it rains. I think after after the rain this uh, this coming weekend, so all of the all of the oat ground that Kurt has got is going to grow into double crop soybeans. So we are going to be planting some double crop soybeans. I actually may be doing a lot of that while Kurt and, uh, and his wife they um, they get started on the wheat because he's got uh, he's got a fair amount of wheat to get uh, to get cut this summer so I think there's this field right here that we're in right now and then right across the waterway right over there that's another part of this field that we started back there um, so it's done and then the field that we uh, that we square bailed that's over there by by his house that is also going to put get put into double crop beans so there's going to be, I mean, not a lot of acreage, but you know, a, a fair amount of acreage that gets put into uh, that gets put into double crop beans. So, and that'll be fun. I like uh, I like running the, uh, the tractor with the planter on it. Always thought that, that was interesting to actually get to put the uh, to put the seed in the ground. So that's another thing coming up. Uh, if you remember from the last video, uh, I got invited by. Um, by Jess, Jessica, to um, to go see um, the new equipment that Gus Pros has, has ordered and taken delivery of. So I'm looking forward to that. I don't know I don't know when it's actually going to happen, but I'm looking forward to that. I think they've I think they've kind of done some some tests, some some test cuts on some of their wheat. But a lot of the varieties that are planted around here that are sort of later varieties, they're just not quite there yet. 
and I don't think their combines are running. I do think that they've they've kind of tried a couple of places, but it's still just a little bit too wet. And so if it does rain this weekend, um, it's probably going to be, I don't know, depending on what the weather does, it's going to be early this next week or maybe towards like Tuesday, Wednesday of next week before those varieties are, are ready to start coming off the field. So. So I don't know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, this shouldn't take too long. I think, um, I don't know, I don't quite know how many acres um, that are left here, but uh, I know that I know this field is over, over halfway finished, just this part here to the south of that waterway. Um, so, should be done by probably late this evening, uh, I think. I think the oats should be finished up for, for 2020. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the combining. I may uh, pop in here later and um, have a little more commentary, but I think for now we're just gonna probably listen to some music and enjoy around the combine out here in the field by ourselves.
All right, so we are getting to the point where uh, I believe the grain cart is going to be pretty much full with what I've got on the combine now. I actually might not even be able to unload the full combine uh, onto the grain cart before it's full. So here pretty quick, we will go hop in the grain cart and see some grain cart action. going to go ahead and I will kill the separator. Yep, I think we're pretty much going to be full here. Pretty shortly. We got a little bit over there on the back side that we're still filling. I think I'm calling it good right there. So, fold that in. Just going to uh, leave the combine running because we'll be right back. We'll just uh, shut the separator down. I'll have the combine down a little bit and we will be right back. Be mindful of the, uh, the trees on the unloading auger. <clears throat> now one thing you might not think about uh, when this, as far as grain carting goes, and really just driving through the fields in general, you know, you've got this big wide open space, wide open area. But generally, and again, it just depends on who you're working for and what exactly it is that you're doing and what their, you know, their tillage method, tillage style, or lack thereof. But uh, I know that that Kurt, he's kind of instilled in me, you drive on the headlands as much as possible. So in other words, you drive, um, you drive along the front of the field, the back of the field, the side of the field as much as you can because that just keeps, um, that just helps reduce compaction and rutting out in the middle of the field. You know, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a little over 800 bushels on this grain cart and yeah it's got big tires but it doesn't really matter how big your tires are when you have that many bushels on the grain cart you are still going to leave some ruts and leave some compaction so that's one thing that I always kind of try to keep in mind and uh, and kind of think about whenever I'm on the grain cart or just um, just on uh, a piece of equipment in general, uh, driving around out in the field, is that I try to uh, I try to reduce the chances of me leaving a rut or or um, you know leaving major compaction uh, to a minimum. making pretty good progress really we've been at this for about an hour and I'd say we're we're probably at least a third of the way done uh, with what we got what we got left so a couple of more hours maybe and we should have this knocked out It is going to slow me down though because um, 
I probably won't get this field finished before we got to go dump this truck. So that's one thing about it that uh, that I got to consider too. That's going to slow me down quite a bit. We're not far away from uh, from Kurt's place, but it still takes time to you know get the truck out on the road and get there, unload um, back at the farm. His leg, he's, he's got a decent sized leg for for the size storage facility that he's got, but it still takes a little bit of time to, to unload the truck. But uh, we'll get it. Alright, I'll, uh, I'll pick back up with you guys when I'm back in the combine.
Well gang, I, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. I've got, uh, I've got just a few passes left. I don't know, I've got four passes left probably. Five, maybe. Maybe four passes and, and a little sliver left. But the fact of the matter is, it, uh, this video is getting pretty long already. I've still got a little bit of grain left in the combine. The grain cart is full. And the, uh, the truck... The truck is almost full. So, I think I'm going to call it off here. You guys will just have to uh, see me drive a truck again in, uh, in another episode. Maybe uh, <clears throat> I'm going to help Kurt with, uh, with the wheat harvest. And he's got quite a bit of wheat to cut. And then uh, there will be soybeans and, and getting into the corn and all that. So, there will be plenty of time for truck driving and, and that sort of thing. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today i hope it was a, a welcome change uh, from all the hay baling i've been doing here lately i have not been paid for any of the custom hay baling that i've done uh, that should be should be getting a pretty a couple of, of pretty good checks here before long um, the big one from from kurt and a smaller one from uh, from steve I look forward to that because I'm running low on my um, my uh, operating capital, uh, as as you could call it, I guess. I've got some uh, I've got some upgrades that I want to do that uh, I'll be showing you in an upcoming video. Not necessarily equipment upgrades because I'm not looking at, at investing in any any more equipment uh, anytime soon. But just some couple of things I want to do to my truck, etc to make it a little more uh, a little more user friendly but uh, looking forward to having a little bit of money here pretty soon I think probably the next video is gonna be uh, after after it rains I've got to get uh, I've got to get Steve's um, I gotta get Steve's alfalfa cut and bailed so that should be coming up pretty soon. That'll probably be the next video sometime next week, depending on uh, depending on how the uh, how the rain goes. So guys, appreciate you coming along, following along with me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and please subscribe. It's real easy. You can just click that little red tractor down in the bottom right hand corner, and it'll give you the option to subscribe. And guys, if you want to know when the next video is going to come out, hit the uh, hit the bell notification so that you get a notification on your phone or your tablet or computer or whatever it is that you're watching on when the next video comes out. So thanks a lot, guys. Uh, again, I hope you enjoyed and come back and see me on the next one. Have a great day.